Hello everyone, this is Sir Joshua and this is the first um, topic that we will be having for nursing informatics for our laboratory class. So for this topic, we will tackle much on your computer hardware. So without further ado, let's start with our first, uh, very first topic for this um, prelims. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Computer hardware. So when we discuss or when we, when we talk about your computer hardware class, it is the physical components of a specific machine. Okay? So it is composed of many different parts that enable the user to communicate with the computer and with other computers to produce your work. And it uses your electronic components and instructions to perform calculations and repetitive and complex procedures, process text, and manipulate your data and signals. So your computer hardware class um, includes both your internal and your peripheral hardware. So later on, we will discuss that one. So it also includes class your electronic circuits, your processors, and the motherboard of our computer. It also includes class your devices that is peripheral or extension na siya of our main computer such as your keyboards, your mouse, your printer, and we will discuss them as we go through with our topic. Now, our computer hardware class has its major characteristics, okay? When we talk about automatic computer hardware, this is working by itself or it is doing or occurring something spontaneously without conscious thought or intentions. Automatic, okay? Next is your electronic. So specifically means having or operating with the aid of many small components such as your microchips, your transistors that control and direct an electric current present in the computer itself. And also class, we have your general computer hardwares, um, which, um, which includes your speed, which is usually faster than a human being. We also have your reliability. Okay, or it is reliable in nature. So when we talk about reliability class, it is consistently good in the quality or the performance and is able to be trusted, especially when we give out um, information or data. Next is the storage capacity. So a good computer hardware must have a bigger storage capacity than our notebooks and literal nga books that we are using. Okay? Now, so in the topic of uh, our computer hardware class, we will be discussing the basic components, the history of our computers, the classes, the types of computers, and your hardware peripherals. So we will be discussing them one by one. Okay? So if you have further questions regarding the topic, you may just message me after the discussion, okay? Now, let's have first the basic components of our computer hardware. So, the three basic components include your CPU, okay, or your central processing unit. We also have your input and output, and we have your storage media. Let's have first your CPU, mm. It is considered class to be the brain of your computer. So it is consists of one arithmetic and logic unit and control unit and a memory. Okay? So ano ni siya class ang arithmetic and logic units? So when we talk about arithmetic and logic units, these are used to control the mathematical functions. Okay? Sa mga sumasuma. So it includes your addition, sub, uh, subtraction, multiplication, so on and so forth. And other mathematical functions that will test the logic or your logic. Okay? Next is we also have your control unit. So it carries out your computer function such, uh, such as your fetch, execute, decode, and storage. Okay, again, when we talk about your control unit class, it carries out your computer functions such as your fetch, your execute, your decode, and your store. So, for example, when a user sets a command to add number 
uh, add two numbers like for example 220 plus 310 the control unit fetches the instruction and decodes it for proper operation which is addition then the control unit will execute by sending the instruction to the arithmetic unit to find the answer or for to find the answer rather and then the computer will store and display the answer on the screen so for example with the use of the calculator sa ating computer gina ano niya gina calculate niya dira okay gina process niya okay next is we have your memory so it is where the computer stores all the data storage memory okay <clears throat> so maghamal kita class memory we have two types of your memory or two parts of your memory it can I either be your rom or your read only memory and we all have also have your ram or your random access memory so when we talk about your rom or your read only memory it is your permanent storage that can only be read by the computer and cannot be erased or altered di siya mapanas Okay, we also have your RAM, okay, your random access memory. So working memory primarily used for working storage. It is changeable, can be accessed, used, and written on repeatedly. So usually, dira kita nag-save-save sa ato yung mga file, dira na siya nag-delete, okay, your RAM. When we talk about your ROM class or your ROM, it includes your software programs that is not erased when the computer is turned off. Okay, wala siya kakapanas, bisa ni off ta si computer. When we talk about your RAM or your RAM, no? RAM is temporary storage that contains data and instructions that are stored and processed by what we called as your apps or your applications. So its contents are not deleted when the computer is turned off. Okay? So again, magkaiba po si ROM at si RAM. Okay? Your CPU also includes these following parts, your motherboard and your CPU microchip. Now, let's have your motherboard. When we talk about your motherboard class, it is a printed circuit board and foundation of a computer that is the biggest board in a computer chassis. Okay? It allocates your power and allows communication to and between the CPU your RAM, and all the other computer hardware components such as your hard drives and your video cards. So, kung mag-open kita sa ato nyo computer units, dira na siya kung kisa nag-ungot-ungot ang mga cords sa ato nyo motherboard. So, kung mag si motherboard, usually, it doesn't function. Okay? Ang ato nyo computer units. <clears throat> so, it is a flat sheet class made of firm and non-conducting material. Typically, one side looks like a maze. Okay, though gamiz me siya. As you can see in the background of this video presentation, though gamiz siya. Like this one. Okay? And the other side contains your microchips, the wires, and slots. Okay? And these are multiple types of motherboards, or there are, rather, multiple types of motherboards designed to fit to the different types of computers and different sizes of our computers. Next is we have your microchip or also known as your microprocessor. So it is a complete computation engine that is fabricated on a single chip. So as you can see there in the picture, Intel nibla. Okay, that is our microchip. So if you can try to check the in your laptops, if you have your laptop devices, pinakasulat dira Intel i3, Intel Core i5, 10th gen, or ikapilan siya nga gen. Usually, um, it um, shows the kind of microprocessor that you have. Okay, so it is a complete computation, uh, a computation engine, and it is the heart of any normal computer, whether it is a desktop, a desktop machine, a server, or a laptop. And a CPU chip's performance is measured in MIPS, or your millions of instructions per second. Yeah. So, our first microprocessor was called Intel 4004. Okay? Sa kadugay yun, ang pinakauna, ginagamit si Intel, which is until now, ginagamit na pag -git. Okay? Intel 4004 is introduced way back in 1971. Okay? 
Now, let's have the different types of devices. We have your input and output devices. <clears throat> so, these devices is used as a way of receiving commands and data from the outside and a way of reporting out its work. So, these are wired to a controller that is plugged into the slots of circuit boards. These are also your devices that are attached or linked to a computer that are peripheral to the main computer box. Kung baga, kung sa computer ta, sila nang ginapang angot-angot ta. Okay? Input and output devices, this includes your keyboard, your touchscreen, your mouse, your printer, and your fax machines. Okay? Your speakers can be considered as that one. Okay? Storage components such as your hard drives, no? your, th your thumb drives, ang ginatawag na flash drives, your floppy drives, your tape drives, and your sound system. Like this one, my earphone or my microphone being used. These are examples of your input and output devices. And of course, your computer monitors, ang screen sang ato nyo computer is considered as an input and output device. Examples of your input, of course, are this one. We have your mouse, your keyboard, your cameras, or your webcams, and your headphones or earphones. Okay? These are called as your input devices. Okay? Magamakita input, usually, it allows the computer to receive information from the outside world. So, from the outside, like this mouse, no? Directly siya connected to your computer or, inter uh, or your laptops, rather. Okay? Next. We have your output devices. Okay? Sir, paano naman sila considered as output devices? Like your printers or your fax and your monitor and your speakers. So, it is called as output because it allows the computer to report the results to the external world. Okay? Kung anong araw sa sulod, ipagwa niya da, such as the sound, for example, or ang ginaprint ni mga mga files, okay? These are considered as your output devices. Next class is your storage media. So, it includes the main memory but also external devices on which programs and data are stored. So, we have uh, different types class of our storage media. Diyan kita nag-save sang aton nga mga file. Number one is we have your hard drive. So, it is a peripheral that has high speed and high density. Peripheral, ginaungot, ginatakod. Okay? Next, we have also your diskets. So, if naabta nyo ni si diskets, medyo may edad-edad na ka mo. Okay? <laughs> it is a round magnetic disk in case in a flexible or rigid case. We also have your CD-ROM. Okay, rigid, uh, rigid disk that holds a much higher density of information than a diskette and has a much higher speed. And we also have your CDRW or your rewritable CD. New type of CD that could be written on by the user. Anong kinalain nila si CD-ROM? Hindi madilit. Si CDRW, rewritable, madilit ang file dira. Pwede ta magamit si CD at any um, at any time at and pwede pa i-reuse kumbaga and madilit-dilit ang files dira. we also have the common thing na ginagamit natin for storage media ayan nagtagalog na si Sir okay. <coughs> we have your USB disk or your flash drive so small removable hard drive that is inserted into the USB port of a computer okay USB disk flash drive okay we also have your magnetic tape drives that run a magnetic tape the same with any music tape player today it is obsolete for home computer use medyo matagal tagal na rin to si magnetic tape and we also have your zip and jazz drives similar to floppy disk but are of higher capacity okay ano mga tsura nila this one is your examples of these storage medias mentioned a while ago so we have your hard drives your diskettes your CD-ROM and your CD rewritable, and we have your flash drives, magnetic tape drive, and zip and jazz drive. Ayan. So that is for our storage media examples. Now, nakwento na rin man lang atin, oh, nag-mix na yung language na so, okay? 
Nag-historyan ay naman lang tas ang computers. How about if we talk about the history of these computers? Okay? So, let's have the history of our computers class. <coughs> the first computers that we have class are considered as your first generation computers. So, they used vacuum tubes in their design. They run hot, thus required a great deal of cooling. Okay, nakadasok sila sa vacuum tubes para hindi sila mag-overheat. The first true digital computer was built in 1943 with funding from the U.S. military and used to design airplane and other complex engineering applications. So we have here first your prototype World War II uh, military computer. So these were big, much less power than any ordinary computer that we use today and they can handle relatively few operations and were difficult to program. In fact, it was programmed by scientists and the approach is slow, tedious, and impractical for a commercial machine. Okay? Mga gahigante, panisang una ng mga computer. Okay. We also have your vacuum tube computer, or also known as your ENIAC, -E or as read as ENIAC. Okay? It is made by Eckert and Motchley Corporation. So, Remington Corporation bought the Eckert Motchley Corpora uh, Corporation later on made, later on and made Univac 1. Okay? So, ang tag-iya, sinisang vacuum tube. Okay? Ginbakali na sang Eckert and Motchley, again convert into Univac 1. So, in 1955, it is the very first commercial application that was run when General Electric processed its payroll in the Univac. Okay, kumbaga, first commercial app ni siya si Univac na. Now, let's try to picture out this first generation computers that was mentioned a while ago. Ito si prototype World War II military computer. As you can see, maraming nakakonect dyan. Pero ang ending dyan class ay iisang computer lang siya. Okay? <clears throat> We also have your vacuum tube. Tinawag siyang vacuum because it is contained into a vacuum sealed na mga containers. Okay? To avoid overheating. And lastly, nang binili ito, nang na-mention na corporation a while ago, naging Univac 1 siya. So as you can see, unti-unti siyang lumiliin. Okay? Now, let's proceed with the next. We have your second generation computers. So, introduced in the 1950s. So, they use transistors instead of vacuum tubes. There, there is lesser heat, improved reliability, and much greater speeds. Nag-level up si first, naging mo siya second. Ayan. They use transistors. That means there is lesser heat. Hindi na siya masyado mag-init. Kay transistors na ang ginagamit. It will improve its reliability and much greater speed. Wala siya nagalag. Okay? They are still quite large but transistors were smaller. So, examples of this second generation is called as your IBM 1401 and 1620 are examples of this. Okay? Ito siya. Yan. These are your second generation uh, computers. And also, nang nag-improve na in the mid-1960s, nagkaroon din tayo ng third generation computers, which is introduced in the mid-1960s. And they used micro, miniature, uh, solid-state components called the integrated circuits. Okay? An example of which is the IBM 360. So, they had about 110 uh K of memory, it was in the generation where hard drives are introduced. So, dire pa lang nagka um, hard drive ang mga computers during the third generation, your production of your computers. Like this one. Ayan. So, at least lumiit na yung katawan ng ating computer. <laughs> Siyempre, hindi pwede tao. Wala ang magamay, magnami ang lawas. Pati pa gina, ang computers. <laughs> Ayan. Next is we have your fourth generation or the modern personal computers. Okay? Yung tinatawag nilang PC. Ayan. So, they develop a new speed which could process instructions rather than the access and speeds 
were measured by the instructions per second. So an example of which is the Intel 8008, your Apple, and your IBM 370. So IBM 370 was the first mainframe that had printed circuits. Tandaan, IBM 370, first mainframe that had printed circuits. So these computers are so fast that the old measurement of speed was unsuitable. Medyo nagdasig-dasig na ni siya. Pag-process sa mga files, pag-process sa mga data. Okay? So what are the features of these computers? Si Intel 8008, amun na siya yung atsura. So as you can see, may mga insert. Ano siya sa yung mga diskets? Okay? Apple, like this one. Okay? And we have your IBM 370. Okay? Ito mga, ang Churaya class is the modern day PCs na ginagamit natin. Okay? And also class, we have your supercomputers. Hindi sila lumilipad ha. Supercomputers. They are computers with a high level of performance as compared to a general purpose computer. So, the performance of supercomputers are commonly measured in floating point operations per second instead of millions instru a million instructions per second or your MIPS. So, we have your CDC 6600 and your Cray-1 supercomputer. So, the first supercomputer was developed by Seymour Cray. Okay? Again, first supercomputer developed by Seymour Cray considered as the father of supercomputing. Yeah. So, this is the CDC 6600. Medyo malaki siya, no? Kasi nga, supercomputer. <laughs> and we also have this one, your Cray-1 supercomputer. <clears throat> now, let's have the different classes of your computer. So, we have here, first, your analog computer. It operates on continuous physical or electrical magnitudes measuring your ongoing continuous analog quantities such as your voltage, current, temperature, and your pressure. So examples of your analog are physiologic monitoring equipments such as your fetal monitors. Ang atong mga fetal monitors, atong nga OB, nan. And your heart monitors, these are considered as analog computers. Usually for monitoring. Yan. We also have class your digital computer which operates in discrete um, discontinuous numerical digits using your binary numbering system. So usually class when we talk about your digital computers, data represented by numbers, letters, symbols rather than waveforms. Okay? One example is the one used in the nursing stations for charting and the one we call as family computers. Okay, mga digital computer. Usually, ginagamit natin sa um, nurse station for requesting medications, yan, for charting. Digital computer yung ginagamit natin. Okay? And of course, we also have your hybrid. So, magamba kita hybrid, the combination of the features of your analog and your digital computers. So, it is used for specific apps such as your complex signal processing and other engineering-oriented applications. So, usually yung mga hybrid natin na mga computers class, um, example of which are your ECG, your EEG, okay, your ele electroencephalogram, which captures both waveforms and digital format for analysis. Hindi lang siya number, hindi lang siya waves, combinations of both. Okay? These are your hybrid computers. So, this one is your analog, okay? This one is your digital, usually uh, being used in offices, and your hybrid. So, usually in the hospital setting, we are using the digital and the hybrid. Okay? Now, let's have the different types of your computers class. So, computer technology has evolved from the huge room-sized electronic calculators developed with military funding during the World War II to palm-sized machines. Okay? So, grabe ang pag-transform sa atong computers now. Okay? Let's start, uh, let's start first with 
the biggest your supercomputers so the largest type of your computer computational oriented specially designed for scientific apps requiring your gigantic amount of calculations so usually these designs of your computer uh, supercomputers class are used in engineering no scientific problems and for tasks requiring millions and billions of computations so most probably in banks maybe we can use this one so it is primarily used also in scientific researches and weather forecasting okay next is we have your mainframe computers so this is the fastest largest and most expensive type of your computer used in co in corporate america for processing storing and retrieving data it is a large multi-user central computer that meets the computing needs especially the large amount of repetitive calculations of bills and payrolls okay so compared to desktop mainframes uh, this has an extremely large memory capacity and fast operating processing time it can process large number of functions actually. We also have your microcomputers, yung tinatawag na nating PC, yung ginagamit natin for online class. <laughs> so it is used for an increasing number of independent applications as well as serving as a desktop link to the programs of a mainframe. So the one we are currently using is considered as a microcomputer so in hospitals class it is used for patient classification staffing of nurse scheduling of the nurse and personnel management of the applications Ayan. as far as i remember when i was working in the operating room when we try to request um um, equipments and material for operating procedures we are using microcomputers to request it directly to the pharmacy and will be get by the or staff or operating room staff okay. mas dasig ang processing mas na may computer kaysa sa nag request request kita using your paper requisition slips okay and we also have class your handheld computers so these are small and special function computers which are introduced in the late 90s so it has the same functionality and processing capabilities to the standard desktop uh, microcomputer however there are limited expansion possibilities in the office network gamay lang siya handheld okay so our cell phones, our tablets, and iPads can be considered as handheld computers. Ayan. Now, let's have the hardware peripherals. Ito yung mga kalimitang ginagamit natin para i-connect sa ating mga computers and laptops. Number one is, of course, our keyboard. Ayan. So, most common input device similar to a keyboard of typewriter and is connected to the box with a cord. So, different types of keys found in a keyboard are as follows. Ayan. Sa keyboard natin, meron tayong typewriter keys, your function keys, your numerical keys, your cursor, your toggle, and your special operation keys. Okay? Um, let's try to differentiate these um, keys located in our keyboard. First is the typewriter keys. So these are the largest and the contains your keys that follow your Q wordy arrangement. Arab lang Q W E R T Y so on and so forth. Typewriter keys na sila naton. Followed by your function keys. So as you can see on your computers, if you have your computers there or your laptops, ang F1 tanabra to F12 your function keys. They are programmable, uh, programmable since their function is dependent on the computer's software, uh, computer software program. We can also use the Alt, Control, and the Shift to expand the function keys by being used in it. Next is your numeric keys. From the word numeric, number. Okay, calculator type section that enables the user to enter numeric data. And we have your cursor keys. Ang arrows na nabla, up, down, left, right. We have your cursor keys. Next is we have your toggle keys. Okay. Those that have dual purpose when pressed once the function is on. And if pressed second time, it is off. Okay. 
For example, your number lock, arang num lock sa kilid, sa inyong computer, num lock, caps lock, and your scroll lock. These are your toggle keys. It changes the function of a, of your hotkeys na ginatawag when pressed. Okay? Next is we have your special operation keys. Okay? Mga special na siya. Um, wala siya sa mga na-mention niya keys. Like for example, your on and off, your home, your end, your print screen there, your delete, backspace, no? delete and enter, escape na. Mga special operation keys na sila na sa atin keyboard. Okay? I think this was also discussed to you way back in your senior high school for MTech. Okay? Empowerment Tech. Next, we also have your monitors or your screens. These are considered as your hardware peripheral also. So, display screen component that allows the user to see the images and so on and so forth. It can show also class your colors, your animation, your text that the computer can produce. So, if the pixel counts rises, there is also an increase in the sharpness and clarity. Ang mga ganit class, usually sa mga cameras na ito, no? we choose those that have higher pixels. The more pixels, the klaro ang aton nga images nga ginalantaw or the videos that we are watching. Okay? The pieces of today comes with a 14 to 21 inches monitor. Okay? Yan. We also have your mouse and your trackball. Ang iban gani so mga mouse na no di ba? Ang gina usually tang ginagamit are already bluetooth, no? Infrared na lang ara sa dalom like this one. So these are your hand controlled mechanical device that it electronically instructs the cursor to move across the video. Like this one no, ang arrow ginagiyo-giyo. So the left button in your mouse is used to select the icon, activate the process and implement function while your right button used for special functions depending on the program installed. <coughs> so, para siyang habo, a sabon. Diba? Yan. And we also have your touchpad in your mouse button. Ayan. Pisil, pisil. Flat rectangular depression on the keyboard that senses the pressure and movement of the user's finger. <laughs> Okay, so this is your touchpad and your mouse button. So the user simply drags the finger around the touchpad to move the cursor if wala kayong mouse. Yan yung ginagamit na. Yan. We also have your light pen and your touch screen. Ayan, if your computer units or your iPads, we use light pens. Kung wala light pens, di ato lang yung tudo, pwede man na. Okay. So these are photosensitive device that responds to light images when placed against your monitor screen. So your touch screen class involves the use of special filter on monitor screen to sense the pressure of the fingers that can signal the computer to initiate your actions. Next is we have your magnetic ink character recognition. Okay, so this is the, this is the most common one used in imprint, imprinting on the bank checks. Sa mga banko ba na? Used to, exam, er, to examine the shape of the uh, magnetic ink character and convert them into binary code, a uh, code rather for computer input. Next is we also have your voice synthesizer. So allows users to input data through speaking which is connected to a microphone. Like this one that I am currently using, hindi ko siya ma-elevate. Yan, I am using this one, an audio output in which I can use, um, or we, I can in, rather insert this microphone na wala siyang noise because of the noise cancelling effect on this microphone. And also with the use of your voice synthesizers, I can have some of these sound effects like this one. Or this one. Or even this one. Ayan. So, this is a voice synthesizer. I can also change my voice actually with the use of this one. Pero ayoko na. Huwag na maghahaba pa yung time natin. <laughs> Next class is your optical character recognition. So, your, your QR code. No? Backtrack. 
allows data to be read directly from a form or document, an electronic optical scanning device, or a barcode reader that interpret the marks and the codes. Yan. Ang walang kamatayang backtrack natin is an example of this one. We also have cluster imaging. So primarily transforms the images from various types of your graphics into digital form which the computer can accept, represent on the screen and process, excuse me, and many types of graphics, uh, graphical images on paper such as your x-rays. We also have your DVD. Hmm. DVD or your digital versatile disc. O diba, bago pa lang kamo nakabalo. DVD. Looks and feels like the CD-ROM but holds much more information and contains many more multimedia features. We also have cluster printers. Ayan. So it converts information produced by the computer system into the printed one or the printed forms. So we have different kinds of printers. Meron tayong laser, na laser na lang yung ginagamit. Okay, substantial increase in output quality and speed over your jet printers. So, this is used for printing the graphics, images, and illustrations. Mas mabilis siya. Okay? We also have your ink jet and your bubble jet. So, small burst of ink in paper bubble jet used heating elements to prepare the ink, whereas ink jet used piezoelectric crystals to ionize the ink. Okay? Meaning, may may ginagamit pa siya nga pang painit sa ink kay para siya magbasa kag amung pag-print ito pag-gamit. Okay? So, lain, gina ang iya nga results ang printing ni laser kag ni inkjet and bubble jet. Okay? We also have your modems. Hmm. Kamusta ang ato niya mga wifi? Hmm. Modems are communication device used to connect a terminal with mainframe or another computer. So it connects the user with remote computers, enables communication, and facilitates your function of both input and output devices. Now, your computer systems are composed of many different component parts that enable the user to communicate with the computer and with other computers to produce your work. Ayan. So the group of required, the group of required and optional hardware items that are linked together to make up a computer system is called its configuration. So para maungot-ungot tani ang mga external devices, usually we try to connect them with the use of the configuration sa aton nga systems. Okay, dira ta ma-change ang aton nga mga setup sa audio, sa video cams, the qualities, okay? When computers are sold, many of the key components are placed inside a rigid plastic housing case, which is called the box. What can typically be seen from the outside is the box containing the internal components and the peripherals, such as your keyboard, your mouse, your speakers, monitors, printers. Computers are now pervasive throughout the healthcare industry. Okay? Now, siguro nag-curious ka mo nga, ah, mo puro computers. Nga, ah, mo nang gina-discuss ni sir. It's because in the delivery of healthcare, usually, kasama na natin si computer. So, the applications are expected to continue to expand and thereby improve the quality of healthcare while at the same time reducing some cost. Okay? Usually here in the Philippines, when we deal with charting, nagpipaper pa tayo, sulat-sulat. In other advanced care hospitals or tertiary hospitals, nakaano na lang sila, they are already using your iPads for charting, for documentation. Okay? So, the applications of computers to the healthcare will greatly expand the diagnostic and therapeutic abilities of practitioners. Mas hapos sa ila mag-assess sa ato niya patients when the reports are directly connected with the computer. With the results, with the visualization, it is much easier class. So, it also broadens the diagnostic treatment options available to the recipients of healthcare. Okay? And also, class, your computers allows 
the practitioner for distance visualization and communication with patients in remote areas. Especially now that we are in a COVID-19 situation or, for example, a pandemic like this one we are experiencing right now, um, we have your teleconsulta in which we are only using computers for consultation. And even give res uh, your um, reseta diba via computer na lang ang mabilisan na tayo ngayon so none of these changes could have happened without the tremendous advances in the machinery so thanks to our technologists and our practitioners who develop the usage of these computers in the modern world especially with the delivery of our nursing care ayan okay. now the computer hardware advancement in healthcare. Okay? Tandaan natin class. Computer hardware advances during the late 90s, uh, 1900s and 2000s. So, this have made possible uh, possible many changes to the healthcare industry. Next, the first work to be modified consisted of special administrative functions such as your finance, your payroll, your billing, and nurse staff and scheduling. Okay, first work was administrative function. Later class, the computer allowed fantastic changes in the practice of radiology and imaging, allowing non-invasive visualization not only in internal structures but even of metabolic and movement functioning also class our computer enhanced the surgical instruments enabled which enabled our surgeons to inspect endoscopy tools that allow for both visualization and precise removal of diseased tissues leaving healthy tissues minimally okay sa atin bala endoscopy ang tube nga may camera ginadasok sa atong pasyente ginalantaw sa computer ano to natabo sa iya tinae see that is the advancement of our computer usage in healthcare. Now, also class, we have your virtual reality programs in surgery have greatly enhanced the scope and complexity of surgeries that are now amenable to much less invasive procedures. So, una class, ang appendectomy, magpa-appendix, ah, sang appendix na, bala ko na appendicitis, di ba, gina-open, gina-to, gina pa kaginakat ang aton nga inflamed appendix subong so, we can have na lang the certain tube with a scissors i navigate niya na lang to pasulod open ka to dira gisi nga gamay na lang what will happen is we will introduce the instrument visualization kaginakat na lang dito sa sulod kay ginabutong pagbutong mo ara ng appendix na close na to kay ginkat siya and then burn kada signal lang okay less invasive um, as a result, massive damage to skin and subcutaneous tissues, muscles, and organs have been eliminated. So, kumbaga, wala na taga ka-damage gid sa mga tissues and organs ng aton pasyente because of the help of the computers. Millions of patients also class who formerly who have needed weeks in the hospital recovery are now able to be released from the hospital the same day of the surgery. Okay, sang una mas stay pa sila 2 to 3 days because invasive ang procedure. Sang so, naging less invasive na siya with the help of computers, dasig ang pagpapuli sa pasyente natun. Okay? And also class, telemedicine or what I've mentioned a while ago, your teleconsulta, is now being used to reduce the impact of distance and location on the accessibility and availability of healthcare. So, kitams. Computers are of big help gid sa aton nga nurses. And not just in nurses, but all, all of the healthcare professionals that deliver their care for their patients. Thanks to the computers. Ayan. Ayan, so that ends my topic on computer hardware for our module 1 lesson 1 for our laboratory for nursing informatics. Um, again, if you have questions, feel free to message me on the Teams chat. And I will be leaving you with some of activities. Just check the assignments tab of our channel or general channel for informatics. And then try to answer the activities before the deadline. Okay, remember, if you have submitted late, there will be deductions for that one.
Okay? So, I think that's it. Thank you so much and see you on our next session for Nursing Informatics. Thank you very much and have a great day.